back to Inside Eastern Utah. We are here now with Helper City's new mayor. Lenise Peterman took over earlier this year, and it's only been a couple of weeks, but you have just hit the ground running and are busy already. Oh, yes, it's been, uh, you know, there's a lot to learn, uh, especially when you're new to government like I am. Uh, so I've been trying to use that runway in November and December mm -hmm. to uh, really get a handle on certain things, especially uh, campaign points that I had, uh -huh. such as um, the electrical grid. I attended a conference in December up in Salt Lake regarding that uh, so I can educate myself and, and bring that back home to the community because mm -hmm. that was one of the key things um, I know I wanted to work on if I was elected. Mm -hmm. Um, and so many other things. Uh, I've been really focused on infrastructural items, yes. uh, such as city job descriptions, ensuring every city employee has a description. Uh, it benefits not only them, but the city, if we all know what the expectations yes, are for a role, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how to move forward if you want to, you know, move up a ladder, that mm -hmm. type of thing. Uh, so I've been working, uh, with the, the different departments on that, I'm not creating job descriptions in a vacuum, but standardizing them, providing them to department heads and other key people to review, and we, we iterate and come up with how they work, and, and then it's kind of just a guidepost mm -hmm. moving that's forward. That's probably a big undertaking on its own. It's just one thing you've been working on, but that's a big undertaking. How many employees well, does the city have, approximately? Um, I would say between seasonal and full-time, mm -hmm. we probably have around 20. Yeah. Um, so you got to wade through all the duties for everyone, make sure everything's clear and that all your bases are covered. Right. And my objective was I had formulated, at least in my head, like a 90-day plan of things I wanted to mm -hmm. accomplish. So having uh, job descriptions into legal review by the end of January mm -hmm. was one of my personal key milestones, and I think we're in really good shape to get that done. That's great. So you talk about this 90-day plan. What are some of the other things you're wanting to focus um, on those first three months? I've drafted some documentation, rules of procedure, which um, other city governments utilize uh, for how they will conduct uh, public and open meetings. Oh, yeah. So um, I, I want to make sure meetings are efficient and productive, and I want to make sure that we're conducting uh, from both sides of the, the arena with respect, mm -hmm. you know, so from the council to the, to the constituents and from them to us. Uh, so I've, I've developed some rules of procedure. They're currently under legal review. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I want to just sort of lay out the rules of engagement so that people know, you know, maybe you're coming and you're not happy, but let's have a civil discourse mm -hmm. so that we can work together to resolve whatever that is um, versus, um, you know, an emotional barrage of uh -huh. information. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's another key component. And, and it's really interesting when I went to some elected officials training, you know, you can, meetings can span a free-for-all, everyone can talk anytime, mm -hmm. et cetera, to uh, rules, Robert's Rules of Order, strict, no, mm -hmm. no talking, you, you can't so even complete talk. complete opposite ends you, of the spectrum. Right, and I want to move a little more towards the middle, and they said as you do that, actually it will instill confidence in the community yes. because you appear like you know what you're doing as a government entity, and so I have... I really want to segue that way so people go, oh, they know what they're doing. Yes, you and know. it also gives uh, the community a say. Oh, and yes. A great platform for them to come in and voice their ideas or opinions, concerns, gives them a great avenue to do that as well. Absolutely. And so that is number two. What else are you going to be working um, on in these first three months? I actually have a couple of critical grants uh -huh. uh, that I'm working on. I'm working with the National Park Services and RiverRestoration.org uh, to uh, secure funding for phase four of the river restoration. Yes. Uh, it's the SACO diversion is what they call it. They have little project names. Uh -huh. uh, so we're working on that. That's due at the end of the month. So I've been involved with meetings on that front, um, as well as uh, chasing down some fire department grants um, our, our fire department is volunteer and 
you know, they need Sorry. new, what they call turnout equipment, uh -huh. which is the fireproof jackets and, and pants and And I'm boots. sure they aren't cheap. <laughs> oh, no. You know, you're looking at 1200 for one. Wow. Yes. And you have quite a few volunteers on 16. board. 16. Oh, wow. So that's a big undertaking to yep. try and get that. So uh, we've identified a couple of grants, one due at the end of the month, and then uh, another one doesn't have a, a timeline. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's so important for the people who uh, serve in our public safety for us to make sure they're safe, too. Of course. So. Of course. So we talked about, you know, these 90 days, your first, maybe one of the first milestones was your first meeting. Yes. You guys had your first council meeting of 2018, the first one for you as mayor. It was in the beginning of January. How did that go? What did you think? Um, I, I thought it went well. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to see the, the new council people spin up. Um, they've all been as assigned their, their responsibilities, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be meeting with each of them individually because along with those responsibilities, I want them to develop personal goals and objectives that they translate to the public. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, if you're in charge of the light parade, perhaps chasing down a grant for LED lighting for our buildings mm -hmm. is a goal you have of and course. that you can report to the community, I'm in charge of this, here are some ways we can improve it, here's what I'm here's doing what to help. Plan is. So, um, so I'm looking forward to them working through, you know, having just received those assignments and jumping in and, and working through that. I think it's an exciting time. So are those assignments decided by you? You divvy them out? Is it kind of a collaboration? Everyone kind of plays to their strengths? How does it work? Um, what I did was I met with all of them individually. Mm -hmm. I actually reconstructed the responsibilities mm -hmm. and introduced some new ones. For example, I want to create a Union Pacific liaison because I think we need to have a point person working oh, yeah, with the railroad. Mm -hmm. um, so I drafted a document. I provided it all to them. And, and kind of weighted the responsibilities. And so I did, here are five heavy weighted items, mm -hmm. planning and zoning, um, electrical, public works, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm like, it would be wonderful if you could think of selecting something from these five, mm -hmm. and then here are some medium weighted items, mm -hmm. more event. That won't require as much of your time. Right, mm -hmm. and then here's some other, here's another group of five, and um, it was just, a wonderful thing in that they each selected their own passion mm -hmm. and they were able to all get pretty much what they wanted to work on yes. uh, because they just had these distinct interests and, and wanting to do certain yes. things. Which is great because everyone's going to work so much harder for something they're passionate at and they're right. going to have way more ideas and way more plans of action. So Absolutely. That's great. You were actually joined this year with two new council mm -hmm. members as well, Mallory Matsuda and Donna Archuleta mm -hmm. also took their seats. So the women swept the election this yes. year. So there's been a bit of a change in the council, but you guys will be maintaining a lot of the tradition that is, Helper is known for as well. Can you speak to that? Oh, sure. I mean, the, the historical component of Helper is actually something I think every city council <laughs> member as well as myself is passionate about. Uh, we want to maintain that, um, that character, that, that integrity. Uh, so, for example, uh, Amanda Wheeler is in charge of ordinances, so uh -huh. I'll be working with her on let's get a historic ordinance, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that, that's a goal, you know, of course. for her to, to work on mm -hmm. as an example. And, you know, Dave Dornan has the electrical grid, and we've already actually um, had a, a broad-based free evaluation just this week oh, um, really? of the electrical uh, equipment, we've provided them additional information, and what they're going to structure is a, a proposal that says, mm -hmm. this is a critical fail point. You okay. know, some of our equipment is over 60 years old. Like, you wanna focus on this, uh -huh. and, and here's what it probably will cost to, to repair uh -huh. or, or bring up to date. Um, so I'm excited to see those next steps happening in, yeah, that's you know. probably going to be a long process, but oh, you guys yes. are already getting it rolling, and yeah. you'll just have to kind of take it that step by step. Exactly. 
So before we let you go, let's talk a little bit about what else the coming months show. We have some goals, but what about the day-to-day? -day? Are there any events that are already starting to be in the works game planned? What else is going on on that front? Um, I believe the museum is looking to um, hold a second annual Outlaw Day. Yes. Um, I'm not sure of a date, but uh, I've discussed it with the museum director and uh, that will be calendared soon. Uh, the Arts Festival, there's um, an exciting thing going on there in that um, they have a new board, a very energetic oh, board. And uh, this year, what they're, they're focusing on and I think is exciting is um, they'll do film in August. However, they're going to launch a film festival for February time frame. Oh, really? So that will give us a winter event uh -huh. that the festival uh, will support, but it will be specifically for film. Uh -huh. um, so we think that's just Which is another great draw. In the winter. I mean, right. what's better than going inside and watching watching a movie during the cold months? So. Sure. And I these events are so huge. I mean, I'm sure the board started plan as soon as the last one was over last year. Right. They probably already had ideas and things they wanted to work on. They probably already were gearing yes. up for the next year after that. Right. So Kate is going to run it again and we're very fortunate. Ashley Hardy is going to oh, join yes, from her. Canvas Alchemy. Uh -huh. Yeah, she'll join as the co-director, and um, you know I have offered up any amount of support I can provide them uh, going forward. Great. You know, so um, I'm sure I'll be helping to to figure out vendor booths. That seemed to be my thing. So. <laughs> That's your, your cup of tea, huh? Right. Well, it sounds like exciting things going on even so early in yes. your term, but there are going to be a lot of exciting things and people can actually keep up to date on social media. You have a Facebook page people I can do. find you on. You're always posting there and trying to mm. keep people involved. And what is the name of that? Can you uh, tell our viewers? I, I think it's uh, Lenise Peterman Mayer. Helper City Mayor. Helper City Mayor. Yeah. Just type in Lenise uh, Peterman Mayor, Mayor, until you'll find her. <laughs> right. Um, one thing I did forget to mention, if I can real mm -hmm. quick, is um, we're in dialogues right now to develop a community drug task force group. Oh, wow. Um, so uh, you'll start to see communications about that because I'd like to have a broad net of people and talent mm -hmm. um, to to really just sit down and, and brainstorm, you know, what kind of things can we be doing to help people who find themselves in yes. the unfortunate situation of being, um, you know, addicted to something and, and how do we do that and keep our community safe. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to, uh, to start a dialogue at least on that front. I think the community will be very excited for that because we, um, we know there's a problem and everyone kind of wants to help fix it, but no one quite knows what to do. So hopefully a collaboration between members of the community can get something rolling that will yes, be productive. Yes, that's our hope. Well, it sounds like there are fantastic things going on. Be sure to follow Lenise on Facebook and stay up to date with everything that's going on. You're well welcome to the council meetings Absolutely. once a month. They have them the first week of every month, the first Thursday Correct. of every month. And the community is welcome to those. So if you want to get involved, come to the meetings, connect on social media. They are more than willing to listen to concerns, suggestions, opinions, all right. that stuff. Yes. So we certainly appreciate you joining us. and appreciate right. the work you've done so far and your plans for Helper City. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you for joining another episode of Inside Eastern Utah. Stay tuned, we have more of your favorite programming coming up next. <laughs>